Have you ever wished you could coat a metal object with rich, vibrant paint and get full coverage with no drips or sags? And then have the finish be as durable as the paint on your car all in under 30 minutes? You should try powder coating. Powder coating is a thermoset polymer paint process that uses static electricity to adhere the coating to your part in the form of a dry powder. It's then heated to cure it to a hard, durable finish. Powder coating does require a fair bit of equipment. The first thing you'll need to invest in is a powder coating machine. You'll also need to come up with some sort of a spray booth to work in. You'll need a source of compressed air. You'll need clean metal objects, a variety of powder coating colors, and also a curing oven that you can dedicate to just the powder coating process. For a spray booth, I'm just using a recycled cardboard box, which I've pierced across the top with a copper rod. I've also made some hooks out of copper wire to hang my objects from. For a compressed air source, I'm using this shop's built-in air system. But since the process of powder coating only requires 10 to 20 PSI, you really could get away with using even the wimpiest home air compressor. I've cleaned my metal pieces by sandblasting them in an abrasive cabinet. Now you could use any combination of solvents or manual labor to scrub your pieces clean, but once you get them clean, you want to hang them on a metal hook and avoid touching them with your hands. The powders that you use in powder coating are available from many automotive restoration companies. I buy mine mostly from Eastwood Automotive or from Caswell Plating. They're available in many basic colors, but you can also get a lot of exotic things like metal flakes, pearlescence, clear candies, wrinkle surface, and even some neon colors. You need an oven for curing that is capable of 450 degrees Fahrenheit. Small countertop convection ovens offer an affordable solution for small scale parts. Do not use your home oven. You need something that you can dedicate to just curing your parts. Powder coating machines, or guns, come in a wide variety of prices and capacities. You need to choose one that's appropriate for the scale of the pieces that you're powder coating, and also choose based upon your budget and your level of interest in the process. I use a very low cost system from Harbor Freight. Most of my pieces are small, so I don't require a lot of voltage, and I really prefer the foot activation pedal that's featured on this model. The main unit generates the proper current to give a static charge to the powder. It should be plugged into a grounded, three-pronged outlet. When the unit is plugged in, you need to turn on the main power switch and press and hold down the foot pedal while you spray the powder. Holding the pedal down energizes electrodes in the end of the powder coating gun. It also activates an electrical ground that we will clip onto the copper bar that goes across our powder coating booth. The powder coating gun itself gets hooked up to a compressed air hose. I recommend a moisture filter and also a pressure gauge. You can fine tune the airflow going through the gun by using the valve at the base of the handle. Finally, you need to attach a cup about a third or half full of powder to the gun. Invert the gun while you screw on the cup, that way you won't have a big mess. With everything hooked up, you're going to be creating an electrical circuit. It starts at the main power box, which sends current up to the electrodes in the gun. The powder moves across those electrodes and picks up that current in the form of a static charge. It moves across to the piece in a cloud of powder. That charge will move up to the rod and across to the grounding clip. That will take it right back to the main power box. The first safety concern of powder coating is electric shock. Be sure to read your machine's manual and safety labels. The gun can generate a seriously healthy voltage right at the tip. Be sure not to put your hands anywhere near the end of the gun while the system is plugged in and powered up. The second safety issue with powder coating is protecting yourself from dust and fumes. While you're spraying the powder, you could just utilize an inexpensive particle mask. But to protect yourself from the fumes of the curing process, you're going to want to get yourself a proper respirator. So I'm ready to powder coat. My clean metal objects are hanging from the copper rod. The grounding clip is connected to the copper rod. I've got powder in the cup, the machine is turned on, and the air hose is connected. Now I'm going to put my respirator on. Then activate the foot pedal, 
and gently pull the trigger of the powder coating gun. You may need to adjust the air valve at the base of the gun. Spray powder at the piece. You want to keep about six inches between the gun and the metal object. The powder should be coming out of the gun gently, almost like smoke. You want to coat one side and then release the foot pedal while you flip it over. Then go ahead and coat the other side. When you finish coating all of your pieces, take a moment, turn off the main power switch. Then grab the grounding clip, touch it to the end of the gun to discharge any remaining current that's in the system. Now, with the system grounded, there is no risk of shocking yourself as you move your pieces from the booth to your curing oven. You want to set up your curing oven close to your spray booth and in a way that allows you to quickly and easily load the pieces. Right-handers will prefer the curing oven on the left side of the spray booth. Check the oven to make sure it's up to temperature. You want it to be a bit above 400 because you're going to lose some heat while you load the oven. You want to load the oven as quickly as possible, closing the door between each piece to minimize heat loss. I use long reach pliers to avoid burns as I load the oven from the back to the front. Once you've got all your pieces in the oven, go ahead and set a timer for 20 minutes. We'll start this timer when we see the powder on the pieces flow out or gloss over. Now, glossing happens when the metal objects get hot enough to melt the powder. It usually occurs within a minute, but dense objects may take just a little bit longer. The powder will appear glossy or wet like fresh paint. When you see this happen, go ahead and start your timer. The pieces need to cure for a full 20 minutes in order to achieve maximum durability and hardness. If you wanted to apply a second coat or do a layering effect with multiple colors, you'd want to pull the pieces out just after they gloss over, apply that second coat or color, and then put the pieces back in and let them fire for a full 20 minutes. While the powder cures, it can release some toxic fumes. This is why your oven needs to be retired from culinary duty. It's also important that your studio either has proper ventilation, or you cure outdoors, or utilize a proper respirator. The shop that I'm powder coating in has a powerful vent hood, but I have also set up a fan to bring in some fresh air. When the pieces are cured, remove them from the oven and hang them on a cooling rack. Be sure to close the door between each piece to minimize heat loss if you've got another batch of pieces waiting to go into the oven. Now your objects are not going to be wet or fragile at this point, but they are hot, so please be careful. Once the pieces are cool to the touch, you can remove them from their hanging wires and put them to use. With only a 20 minute cure time, you can coat and assemble pieces the same day. Remember, for the best results in powder coating, you need to start with very clean metal objects. And then take a moment and make sure that your workspace is really set up well so that you can move your pieces easily from your booth to your oven. And please, be careful. Be sure to take all the necessary safety precautions so that powder coating can be a wonderful and colorful experience for you.